uh, the uh, what indications are you getting of where the market's heading next? Well, it's a good performance today, but you can see, I mean, the market has been moving sideways for quite a while. We have been very range-bound. And um, David did mention volume. Certainly, if you're going to be starting to break out of any kinds of ranges, you want to see volumes, which were actually higher today. We saw over th uh, 5.3 billion traded today, but that actually conflicted with um, index option expiry day today. So on those days, we always do see higher volumes traded through the markets. But I think we outperformed our leads from the US and Europe. We outperformed most of the Asian markets. They were mostly all lower throughout trade this afternoon. So it was a good performance. And I think the difference on our market today was the reports from companies we had today were certainly better than the reports we had from US companies last night such as Intel and IBM. Uh, all those resources uh, re uh, reports today really pushed our market higher with materials and energies uh, stocks, the real leaders. The other standard actually was um, the consumer uh, staples sector. We saw West Farmers and Woolworths and the likes of those uh, staples all pushing higher by 1% today. We do have Woolworths uh, report out tomorrow, so that will be watched to finish off the week. And of course, we'll be coming towards banking reporting soon over the next few weeks as well. What did you make of the numbers? Woodside shares did very well. Woodside performed very well after they released their March production results. Uh, we also saw Fortescue and Santos both perform well on the back of their reports as well. Uh, Woodside in particular, uh, it was up about 1.7% today, I think. We did actually see production fall around 10% for Woodside, but they had been receiving higher prices for their gas and oil revenues uh, sales, so we did see revenues jump around 20%, which was a real positive. And we also saw them keep their full year guidance uh, steady at around 73 to 81 million barrels but I think the big big driver for uh, Woodside at the moment uh, will be this Pluto LNG project that it's uh, that's about to come online now we have seen Woodside as a big underperformer on the market over the last little while we've seen over the past year it's underperformed the ASX 200 index by around 15% given given that the energy sector has been an underperformer it's actually underperformed the uh, the energy sector itself uh, so this Pluto project coming online it's going to be doubling uh, Woodside's output in LNG into the Asian market where LNG's demand is increasing and uh, this will be a good thing for the stock because we have seen some cost blowouts, some delays in the development of this project and that was definitely one of the factors that we've seen uh, weighing on Woodside's share price over the past year or so. Uh, in the result released today they did mention that they expect to start producing over the next few days uh, from the Pluto project so that's certainly a positive and I think that full year guidance coupled with the fact Pluto now is coming online seems to be what's driving uh, Woodside's price higher today. <laughs> On the Aussie market, Newcrest is continuing to underperform a big broker downgrade to its target price coming through today. What's your view on, on Newcrest at the moment? This is an interesting stock because so many people hold Newcrest. Um, it is a, a much preferred sort of gold producer and we've seen consider considerable underperformance in Newcrest um, over the past uh, little while, particularly over the past year or so. I mean, if we look at it compared to the broader index, it's underperformed by 22%. But sort of more concerningly, it's actually underperformed the price of gold by something like 40%, the gold e e uh, ETS that trades on the Australian uh, market. Now, that's a huge underperformance for a stock that it gets most of its... Uh, uh, is exposed to the gold price mainly. Obviously, it does have a little bit of exposure to the copper price as well. But if you have a look at a one-year graph of Newcrest at the moment, you can see over the past um, couple of months, we've seen a considerable down uh, downtrend uh, developing in that stock at the moment. And gold itself is starting to look a little bit vulnerable as well. If we have a look at a two-year graph of the gold price, um, you can see over the past, uh, since August, September last year, there is a bit of a downtrend developing there. And one further chart would be the five-year chart where you can see this accelerated gold price we've seen over the past few years. Um, if we look at the bottom trend line there, the gold price is now approaching that bottom trend line and is threatening to break that, uh, which would occur somewhere around sort of 1630, 1635. Um, now, if that happens, uh, that could see a considerable fall in the gold price, and it may well target somewhere down around 1500 or even 1550, uh, which really wouldn't be good for Newcrest or other gold stocks in general. Uh, obviously, the gold price is going to be very dependent on movements in the US dollar, and that's going to depend a lot on US economic data and also any further stimulus moves from the Federal Reserve in the US moving forward. But in terms of Newcrest's underperformance, I mean, they've got big expansion plans going on at the moment. They generally stick to, uh, to guidance. They did have a little bit of a down grade for full year guidance this year um, on some production issues but they have low operating costs and um, 
and they do have considerable explora exploration uh, reserves as well. And so uh, it really showing the sensitivity to the gold price here. Uh, Newcrest is an unhedged miner, so they are very sensitive to the gold price and weakness in the gold price really feeding into Newcrest stock at the moment.